My name is Tamara Keith and I'm a paediatrician in London and I'm going to give you a talk about neonatal resuscitation. So I'm hoping that at the end of this talk you're going to know how to assess the newborn baby, the sort of rules involved in newborn resuscitation, when you might think to intubate and to talk a little bit about borderline viability and when not to resuscitate. So why are newborns different from adults or older children? Newborn lungs at birth are full of amniotic fluid and so we give inflation breaths to expand the chest to clear the amniotic fluid and oxygenate the lungs whereas obviously in an adult they're already full of air and you're just trying to um, re-oxygenate the lungs but in a, in a newborn you have to clear the fluid to then oxygenate the lungs and chest compressions are more to move oxygenated blood to the coronary arteries to kick start the heart. So the heart is structurally normal, you haven't got these blocked coronary vessels as you may have in an, an adult cardiac arrest, it's merely you're doing chest compressions to move the oxygenated blood to the coronary arteries. So at delivery you're going to start the clock immediately, dry and wrap the baby, and stimulate the baby and then assess the baby and what I mean by stimulating the baby is really just drying the baby giving the baby a bit of a rub tickling the feet just the best way to resuscitate a newborn is to actually get it to just cry itself so assessing the baby you're looking at color tone breathing and heart rate so if you look at this picture here the baby is pink you can see that the tone is good they look like they're a little bit wriggly they're clearly screaming, so they're breathing, and I can tell you that the heart rate in this baby was well over 100. So therefore, everything in this baby is good. You would nearly dry and wrap the baby and give the baby to the mother. So with colour, you're simply looking, is the baby pale, blue or pink? The tone, are they floppy or moving and wriggly? Breathing, is it present, absent or irregular? And the heart rate, is it either absent, over 100, or less than 100? So you're not having to actually count the heart rate exactly. And then you come out with three categories really. The baby is either pink, crying with good tone, and therefore you do nothing other than dry and wrap the baby. The baby might have some irregular respirations, but have a good heart rate, and therefore you just need to help the breathing or the baby may be in a very bad way, being pale, floppy, no breathing and a low heart rate. So a good situation would be as in this baby, um, was wriggling, so good tone, was pink, crying with a heart rate over 100. No resuscitation is required and you merely dry and wrap the baby. Quite commonly you get a baby who's not breathing but with a good heart rate, so they may be a little bit blue around the edges, a bit floppy, and so you would open the airway and see if merely neutral positioning of the airway helps the baby to breathe. And you might need to give five inflation breaths. So these are slow, slow breaths over two to three seconds and they clear the fluid out of the lungs. And then reassess at what your, what your um, changes have, have made. So has there been a change with the colour, tone, breathing and heart rate? A bad situation would be a blue floppy baby who's not breathing with a low heart rate. And we're now going to talk about that situation. So with the airway, you need to obtain a patent airway in the neutral position. And the preterm baby may be unable to, su to support their own airway, so you'd have to hold them in the correct position. You may think about suctioning, but this is only required if there's truly an obstruction and you wouldn't ordinarily just suction a baby just because it's not breathing. It's not routine. So assessing breathing, if there's failure to establish regular breathing within 60 seconds, it's an indication to assist ventilation. So you would give five inflation breaths, and this is at a pressure of 30 centimetres of water on the machine, and a preterm would be a little bit lower. And the aim is to inflate the infant's poorly compliant lungs to clear the amniotic fluid, filling the alveoli with air for gas exchange. You always start resuscitation of the newborn in air, and this is to avoid oxygen toxicity. 
Ensure that the face mask is securely fitting the newborn's face and there's no air leak. And you reassess the situation. So you're reassessing the colour, tone, breathing and heart rate. If the heart rate is still slow, you need to ask yourself, did I see the chest expand with the inflation breaths? If the chest did not expand, you need to reposition the airway and repeat the inflation breaths. You do not commence chest compressions until you are certain there has been chest expansion with the inflation breaths. Are you in the neutral position? Is the airway open? Try a one-handed or a two-handed jaw thrust. You may use an oropharyngeal airway or you may need to clear an obstruction with suction. So basically reposition and try again. If the chest did expand but the heart rate is still poor and the baby is not breathing then you need to start chest compressions. There are a ratio of three chest compressions to one ventilation and at a rate of 120. You continue the chest compressions for 30 seconds and then reassess the colour, tone, breathing and heart rate. Drugs are very rarely needed in newborn resuscitation but are needed if there is failure to respond to chest compressions in 30 seconds. So if you're starting chest compressions you need a member of the team to be getting the drugs prepared and getting the umbilical venous catheter ready. The drugs of newborn resuscitation are adrenaline, sodium bicarbonate and dextrose. So now I'm just going to talk through that algorithm of resuscitation of the newborn. So first of all, you dry, wrap and stimulate the baby. You assess the colour, tone, breathing and heart rate. Open the airway, put it in the neutral position and use a jaw thrust if necessary. Assess breathing and if there is no breathing or inadequate breathing, give five inflation breaths. These are slow breaths over two to three seconds. Reassess the colour, tone, breathing and heart rate. If the heart rate is still less than 60, ask yourself if the chest expanded. If it did not, you need to go back to airway and reposition and redo the inflation breaths. If the chest did expand and the heart rate is still less than 60, you give chest compressions at a ratio of 3 to 1. After 30 seconds of chest compressions, if there is failure to respond, you move on to drugs. When might you need to intubate? So in a baby over 32 weeks, if it's failure to respond in a few minutes with um, face mask ventilation, you may need to think about intubation. At less than 28 weeks, babies require intubation to administer surfactant, regardless of whether they are crying or not. Between 28 and 32 weeks, you may need some CPAP to support the ventilation or intubate if there's no adequate response. We're now going to talk about borderline viability. So what I mean is babies who are extremely premature, those who are born at or before 25 weeks and 6 days. And this is approximately 0.28% of deliveries in the UK. So it's a very small number of deliveries, but nevertheless important. And there are certain rules about when you should um, help these newborn babies, when you should resuscitate them and when you should not. At 25 weeks and above, resuscitation is started unless the baby is known to have a severe abnormality incompatible with life. At 24 weeks, the baby is offered full invasive intensive care unless the parents and clinicians agree that it's not in the child's best interests. If the child is judged to be more immature than expected at delivery, it may be considered to be not in the interests of the baby. At 23 to 24 weeks, the precedent should be given to the wishes of the parents. So resuscitation is not expected at this gestation and is only done if the parents really wish it to be so and they need to have been counselled about the long-term expectations of a child at this gestation. At less than 23 weeks, so at 22 to 22 plus 6 weeks, you should not resuscitate the baby. Resuscitation should only be attempted 
if parents request it even after detailed explanation of the likely outcome, which is likely to be death or long-term disability, and it is rare to offer resuscitation at this gestation. So in summary, we've talked about assessing the baby, the colour, tone, breathing and heart rate, the algorithm of neonatal resuscitation, when to intubate and when not to resuscitate. Thank you. And here's just the summary of the algorithm at the end for you to remind yourself.